Gloria Steinem is revered today as a feminist icon, but her road to founding Ms. Magazine was paved with ridicule. You know how every year there's a pretty girl who comes to New York and pretends to be a writer? Sure. Well, Gloria is this year's pretty girl. That's a scene from a new play called Gloria, A Life at the American Repertory Theater. I recently sat down with Tony-winning director Diane Paulus and the actress who plays Steinem, Patricia Callenberg, to talk about the play and Steinem's profound impact on women's lives. Diane Paulus, Patricia Callenberg, thank you so much for being here. So, Diane, I'll start with you. Gloria Steinem, she's sort of in this, this, this moment where she's still very much part of our lives and leading our lives, but she's also tending toward monument at this point. So mm. how do you pull that person <laughs> out of that stratosphere for this play? The whole purpose of the play, in a way, is to demystify Gloria Steinem mm -hmm. and, and let audiences into her journey of becoming Gloria. She wasn't born a feminist. All I knew was I wanted to be a writer, a political journalist. I soon found out that the men got all the political assignments. My high point was writing a long, detailed article for the New York Times on textured stockings. And I think, you know, a lot of people can feel like I could never be as amazing as Gloria Steinem. She has this line in the middle of the play that Patricia says that is, you know, I'm finally come to this radical notion that women are equal human beings and guess what, I'm 35 years old. And that's such an important part of this story, I think, is to, to, for people to understand that you're not born an activist. How does that sit with both of you? To, to be telling this story where a woman had to go that far into her life before realizing she could say something like that out loud or realize it for herself. She's so glamorous and people were not envious, but they thought that she had all the answers. And uh, you, what you also discover in this is that she had a very difficult upbringing and not an easy path. And it, it, it humanizes her in a way. I am grateful when the New York Times assigns me a celebrity profile. When I deliver the article, the editor gives me a choice. You can discuss this with me in a hotel room this afternoon, or you can mail my letters on the way out. I'll mail your letters. Well, you've gotten to know her to, to play the part. Well, I met her a few times. <laughs> I wish I could say I knew her. No. But have, in those few times, have you been able to distill kind of what, what has made her work and what makes her such a real person, yes. but also a, a, such a leader in our society? Yes, generosity. And wh what I've learned about Gloria and, and through the process of creating the show is that she's deeply interested in listening. That's mm -hmm. why she's so passionate about uh, the talking circle as an idea. And for me as a theater person, that connected because in a way the theater is a ritual of a talking circle. Uh, and she's, she's a convener. You know, she, she's, she believes in community and she believes in the power of what can happen when we look out at each other. She has this great quote that shared purpose um, is, is, is the, it, the eliminator of hierarchy. Mm. And I think that starts with herself. She doesn't want to be in a hierarchical relationship with anybody. Patricia, going back to what she had to endure at the beginning, people like Harry Reasoner and Howard K. Smith, I don't think we remember so well now that oh, we a target look she at was? media that, mm. yes, yeah, she was a target, mm. and that it was okay to make her a target on the network news. The first edition of Ms., described as a new magazine for women, is at hand, and it's pretty sad. Among the multitude of causes in this cause-ridden age, one that has not, to me at least, made its case is women's lib. Well, it's still okay to target women. <laughs> I mean, men make the same mistakes all the time, and you won't hear anything about it, but make one a mistake as a woman, boy, the media's on you. How do you survive something like that? It, it, it did eventually get to her, and she had to work to build up her own self-esteem to be able to withstand it. Which is in the play. Which is know, in the play. The book she wrote, Revolution from Within, a book of self-esteem. And she didn't do it alone. She's flanked by women in this production. Gloria's life was defined by community and defined by the other women that she linked arms with. 
This mm. is an ensemble production that takes place in a theater setting that is designed in the round of which the audience becomes the partner. Well, let's talk about that. And that, the, it's a recreation of something that happens regularly, I understand, in her own living room, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the talking circle. So mm -hmm. what happens there? She puts all this rug, all these beautiful <laughs> antique rugs, and she puts cushions down. Do you remember when she had mm -hmm. everybody over? Mm -hmm. and She had a talking circle. And what is a talking circle? <sighs> Just whatever you want to share at the time. Um, I mean, she started it just talking about having everybody sit around and suddenly issues come up, just things come up. I would say being able to tell your story and listening to each other's stories is the surefire path out because you realize you're not crazy. The system is crazy. We've had people at the theater alone. bring up things that we're amazed by because they feel safe. What Gloria says is, the circle is the place that is, again, a different paradigm, right? It's not l a hierarchy. So you it's discover that we are linked, not mm -hmm. ranked. And you have a chance to listen to other people's stories. So you realize you're not crazy and you're not alone. And I think that atmosphere creates space for people to share. And it's amazing how you learn from each other. Mm. You know, we did this over six months, eight times a week in New York Off-Broadway. It's been done at the McCarter Theater and now here at ART. Mm -hmm. And it happens. It's this remarkable experience where people respond because we've had a shared experience. I think that's important. It's not put people in a room mm. and just have a free-for-all. That's a good point. We come together and like a ritual, we, we go through this shared experience, which in this case is a kind of a history of the women's movement and, and, and all the ups and downs and trials of what it means to, um, you know, ha have a journey with your work, with your mother, with your friends, with community. So we're all connected all of a sudden. How has it been to do this story in this time? And I think about since you launched this show in New York, you've had the Kavanaugh hearings, <laughs> the Harvey Weinstein trial, mm -hmm. uh, the Me Too movement, the, the, the many iterations of that, all as this story is unfolding. How do, how do they, how are they in conversation with one another? As far as Gloria's concerned, this whole time has been a gift because it's made people wake up and become active. So she sees it in a much more positive way. We are in a crisis like I have never known, and it seems to be getting worse every day. But I haven't seen such activism as I'm seeing right now. 127 women were sworn into Congress in the midterm. I think it's doing this thing where you're looking back in time and you're also able to relate it to the present moment. And then what happens at the show is you have an intergenerational response to that. So you have- That must be fascinating. It's fascinating. really interesting. And typically you have people who are older who express- um, Despair. Despair about the present. And then true to talking circle fashion, and Gloria said, just let it happen. Let the talking circle respond. You don't have to mediate. Nine times out of 10, a young person will take the mic and say, I'm in it. Right. We just started a feminist club in my school. We're organizing to march on Washington. You know, when someone says, where are the glorious items today? A young person says, they're in my high school. So you, you get generations speaking to each other. You also get a younger generation saying, God, I never knew mm. what my mother, my grandmother had to go through. So it's a dialogue. I spent two evenings with her for the Boston Speaker Series, and I just remember this talking with you both. I remember her distinctly saying that she doesn't consider herself an icon. How do you both look at what she, I'm sure she said it to you both as well. Mm. I, I just, I don't know, she's so funny. I said to her when I met her, I realized in doing this, Gloria, it's been the best thing because as an actor, I don't, it doesn't have to do with my ego. It has everything to do with you. And so I can just, and she went, you're an actor, dear. Please don't forget the ego. <laughs> <laughs> she's so funny. Okay. <laughs> I She's, get it. Uh, she really understands humor and, and <gasps> laughter. Hysterical. She talked about laughter being the only emotion that can't be um, forced. Yeah. She also, um, what I love about her, which I think is important for this production now, she calls herself a self-proclaimed hopeaholic. 
right? And I think right now we need that. Someone mm. said that over the weekend um, in the talking circle that, you know, thank you for the hope. And I found in my experience working on the show that it's always the people who work in social justice, because a lot of them come to the show. They stand up and they say, when was social justice easy? Mm. If you're in the social justice world, you know it's a fight. That's right. And, and you have to be a hopeaholic because you believe in a better future and you're going to dedicate your life to it. And who said it was going to be easy? Well, it's been wonderful to speak with you both. You remind me that when I spent my time with her, it was like sitting at the feet of a tribal elder because she <laughs> is so inspirational yes. in that way and so wise. Thank you both for joining us. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for having us. us.